welcome to today's talk. I'll be focusing on the position manager for Uniswap v4. Um, I go by Sauce. I'm one of the protocol engineers at Uniswap Foundation. And I've been working very closely with like the labs team on the position manager itself. Um, so a little bit about me. This is me on Twitter. If you guys have seen me around, um, I'm also known to be like the troll on uh, GitHub as well. Um, and so position manager, we also internally refer to it as POSM. Um, and whenever we kind of consolidated on this like acronym, we gave it this emoji um, in Slack, and that's kind of where the ASCII art comes from. If you guys do open up the position manager. Um, okay, so this is position management in a nutshell. It's very similar to Universal Router in the sense that it's like a command system. It depends on encoded actions and stuff. I know for Universal Router, it's a little bit kind of annoying to work with, but I think the possibilities that are unlocked with it are, are really, really nice. And so going line by line, um, this is an example of minting a position. So you encode really two actions, right? Like what is the underlying um, liquidity operation, so in this case we're minting, and then some sort of what we call like delta resolving function, like how should we like pay the tokens. Um, and so in mint position you might be like, or I guess in every case when you're creating a position you're paying two tokens. So we also encode the action of settle pair. And then in the following lines you're kind of encoding like what the parameters are. So like, um, can you guys see my mouse on the screen or no? Okay, um, so you have like, you know, obviously the pool key, the tick range, the liquidity, some slippage, um, as well as like the recipient of the NFT position. And then in the second line, you're also encoding like what currencies are being paid, so currency zero and currency one. Um, and then in terms of like actually making the call, this is really minting the position. Um, it's the same function signature for, you know, increasing liquidity, collecting fees, burning positions. And so that's kind of like where some of the friction comes into play whenever you're doing position management or like using uh, command style systems. Um, but the cool thing with it is you can do like super awesome complicated sequences for uh, liquidity management. And so like one of the things that we were optimizing for was really highlighting like the flash accounting behaviors of V4. And flash accounting in V4 is kind of summarized by um, stringing together a bunch of operations and only having to pay the final token differences. Like you're not doing token transfers after each complicated reaction, uh, act, action. Um, and so we've defined like these like fun little operations that you can do, um, such as feeding, right? The idea of taking fee revenue from one position and using it to increase liquidity on another one, or if you were to take fees from one position and make an uh, entirely brand new position, um, we can kind of call that sharding. And so what that would look like, because it's a command-based system, is you are encoding these operations. So um, in this first example, I think it's feeding. So you're decreasing liquidity on one pool and then increasing it on another. And then you only need to pay like the final differences. And um, you aren't restricted to the same pool. Like you could, in theory, with a complicated uh, sequence, is like imagine you're on like ETH USDC and you want to create a position on ETH BTC. Um, you could close your position, swap the USDC into BTC, and then open up an entirely new position on a different key. And with flash accounting, that means like we don't actually have to do any token transfers. It's kind of all done like um, within internal accounting and stuff. Um, so that's kind of like position management and uh, sort of the cool things that you could do and like why we are leaning into the command system. Um, Another thing that we have new in position management for V4 that's a little bit different than V3 is like uh, we can allow other contracts to modify positions um, while under a lock. And so this is like really useful for hooks. So you still adhere to the same command system with like the same actions, the same parameters. It's just now that like approved contracts such as hooks can like operate and modify a position while there's an active lock in place, and so some ideas would be like, inside a hooks after swap function, every every few blocks or every so often, um, you could take somebody's fees and reinvest it back into the position itself. Hooks maybe in before swap could do uh, liquidity rebalancing, where it like concentrates a position into like a tighter range, 
and there are some other ideas around like value redistribution where like a hook could possibly take some of that liquidity and like um, redistribute it to to other people or like do like anti just in time penalties and stuff. Um, this is kind of what it looks like in a hook. Um, this is the before swap. Um, you can see that there's like some approvals happening and you can kind of just like, you know, imagine a sequence of encoded actions and the hook then has access to, to this function and this function call would then modify the underlying position. Um, one thing that's also new in the V4 position management is called, like, we call it subscribers. It's very analogous to liquidity mining um, or staking or rewards. And the idea is, like, it's quite similar to hooks but for positions. Um, so you implement this interface, I subscribers, and this contract can, like, if users opt in and, like, I have a position, I say, I'm going to opt into this subscriber contract A. Contract A will receive notifications every time I like do something with my position. So on subscription, on transfer, on increase or on decrease. And what the subscriber can do is just sort of track my liquidity changes. It can do like reward distribution. Um, and the reason why we did this design is because um, essentially users don't need to actually transfer their NFT. In V3, if you wanted to do liquidity staking, I have to fully transfer my NFT position, and now this contract that custodies that NFT has full ownership of the underlying assets. And so subscribers is kind of like a safe approach to liquidity staking. Um, it's you know, obviously super eligible for our uh, bounties and stuff. Um, there, we, we at the foundation nor at labs have like any intention to release like a canonical version. So this is going to kind of be like a community driven uh, subscribers. Um, this is kind of what subscribers look like. Um, so you define this function or you define this contract, you would deploy it um, and you implement these functions that get called every time somebody's position does something. So like really it's the notify modify liquidity is where you'll do a lot of like your bookkeeping for reward distribution. Um, so that's mostly it with position management in, in Uniswap v4. And so our prizes this weekend are mostly not only just about position management, but you know Uniswap v4. Um, and so that includes like hooks. So the first category, ten thousand dollars for hooks. This is really anything like dynamic fees, um, maybe automated liquidity management. Um, custom accounting, hook fees, value redistribution. Our second category, integra integrations and periphery, it's like if you were to build, you know, maybe a contract that does like really cool complicated sequences, um, that would be to totally eligible. And then our final category is like research and experiments. So that's like LVR, ME MEV, robust oracle designs, just general like random like moonshot ideas that might not uh, fit into the other categories. Um, <clears throat> some of the materials that you guys could look into, um, docs.uniswap.org. There is a pending PR. I didn't realize that I didn't have merge access to the main repo, so I'm like waiting for people in New York to wake up. Um, but if you look on GitHub, you'll find the, the PR with all the v new v4 documentation. Uh, v4, by example, has a bunch of Solidity snippets, and then, of course, we got the core contracts about v4. I'm happy to answer. Were there any questions? No? Cool. Oh. Um, yeah, so there are reference. Oh, yeah. Uh, the question was, are there any example hooks specific to position management or question or? Existing hooks for Uniswap that is already Okay, uh, so the question was, are there any existing hooks out there and then what are we looking for during the hackathon? Um, the, there are some example hooks on um, V4 periphery. They live in a directory called like, I think example contracts. Um, they used to be in here and then we like got rid of them because they were kind of like annoying to keep updating. Um, and so some of them are like, more like interesting things like oracles. We got um, 
limit order. Yeah, so these are the examples here. Um, as for like other examples in core, there are like in our test files, there's a bunch of examples there that you could look. And then as for what we're looking for this weekend is, yeah, just general innovation related to V4. Um, I think the position manager was just finished like a couple weeks ago and that's still pretty new. We haven't seen a lot of developers integrate it yet, so that's kind of like an exciting space for us to, to explore and see how like developers want to play with it and push it to its like, uh, to its limit. Cool, were there any other questions? Awesome, cool, thanks guys. Thank <laughs> you.